and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let all their songs employ, while fields and flowers, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sin and sorrow grow, no thorns in the ground. He comes to make his blessings known. For as the curse is found, for as the curse is found, for as, for as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the glories of his right. And wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love. Good afternoon, Newberry College family, friends, alumni. Welcome to Winter Commencement 2019. Will you pray with me? Gracious Lord, God of all that is seen and unseen, maker of all things bright and beautiful, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us in this place and fill our hearts with the divine joy that we might see in one another your presence among us. You are a God of new beginnings, and today is a celebration of new beginnings. For each and every man and woman who crosses this stage today, you have a divine purpose. We are all created in your image, and your likeness, and we have all been gifted and talented, specially provided, that makes us individuals, uniquely and wonderfully made. We wonder, what are the pathways prepared in the heavens to be set before our graduates? Where will you lead them over the years ahead, Lord? What challenges will they face and overcome? How will these amazing Newberry College graduates impact the world that they call home? What greatness lies within each graduate? You know, Lord, and we come to you in prayer asking your loving grace to be shared freely on each one, that they may be bold in their efforts to find their purpose within, courageous in their faith to take the pathways less taken, empowered in their abilities to love and be loved, and filled with your holy light from within to make this world a brighter and more wonderful place in which we can all succeed and live in peace. Thank you, Lord God, for this magnificent Newberry College campus, our faculty, staff, partners, alumni, friends, and community. Shower your grace and your love upon us every day as we do the work of sharing the light of knowledge from generation to generation. It is your work through our hands. God bless Newberry College today and tomorrow and every day. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome to the Newberry College December 2019 commencement. This is an exciting day for all of you, graduates and your families. I hope you will enjoy this occasion as the graduates complete their time at Newberry College and begin the next chapter of their lives. I want to take a moment to recognize two members of our platform party. We are honored today to have honorary degree recipient, former Newberry College student, and current Bishop of the Southeastern Synod, Bishop Kevin Strickland with us. And our commencement speaker, Dr. Alicia Davis, an Associate Professor of Accounting. Thank you both for being with us today. As we gather here to recognize the achievements of those seated in caps and gowns before us, it's important that we acknowledge the contributions, emotional, spiritual, and financial, 
of the parents, grandparents, spouses, other family members and friends of the graduates in the 2019 December class. Will the relatives of those that are graduating today please stand for a well-deserved round of applause. Immediately following commencement today, you're all invited to the President's reception held in the lobby of the Highland Hall, where we will honor Bishop Strickland and our graduates. You may meet your graduates there and have some refreshments, take some pictures, tour the campus. Again, welcome to commencement celebration today at Newberry College. I now invite Mr. Rob Best, President of the Newberry College Board of Trustees, to the microphone. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rob Best. I'm chairperson of Newberry's Board of Trustees. And on behalf of the board, and as a 1971 graduate with a degree in mathematics, I would like to extend a warm welcome to our guests, our outstanding faculty, and heartfelt congratulations to the class of 2019. Since the uh, 75th anniversary of D-Day is winding down this year, I'd like to make some comments relative to this. On midnight, on or about June the 5th or, or June the 6th, 1944 D-Day, my father was a paratrooper in the 101st Airborne Division and parachuted into France with a mission to disrupt the enemy before the, the landing the next morning. My dad and others were, were inadvertently dropped about four miles from their drop zone in St. Mary Glees and had to find their way to St. Mary Glees in the pitch dark amidst significant enemy presence, hedgerows, and flooded fields. Miraculously, he, he and his uh, fellow um, paratroopers made it, and being a doctor, he set up a field hospital and began treating the wounded. This continued for the rest of the day, when on June 6th at about 10 p.m., a frenzy, frenzied French civilian who lived next door came rushing into the hospital, waving, waving his arms, and neither he, spent, he spoke uh, English and um, the, the people in the hospital didn't speak French. So after a while, they kind of figured out his wife was in labor and needed help. Although extremely fatigued and tired of seeing all the death and destruction, my dad hurried over to the Frenchman's house and later delivered a baby boy, Jean-Yves Berteau, who became known as the first baby born in liberated France. My dad told me that the heartwarming and moving experience of delivering a new baby amidst the massive uh, the carnage stayed with him throughout the war and helped him keep the good and bad in perspective. A picture was taken of my dad, Jean-Yves, and his mother for the Allied newspaper, which he carried with him throughout the remainder of the war and got him through some tough times in the Holland Campaign, the Battle of the Bulge, where he earned a Bronze Star for a daring behind the, behind the uh, line's rescue operation. My dad credited the delivery experience as the most positive influence on his life. As you leave here today and get on with your life, use your degree and all of your Newberry experiences both in and out of the classroom, to not only shape your career, but to help you keep the, the craziness of the world in check with the more positive things in your life. Again, congratulations, class of 2019, and have a nice Christmas holiday. Good afternoon. Mr. President, I present for you, to you for the conferring of emeritus status, Dr. Marilyn Merrick Schroer. In recognition of service and dedication to Newberry College and its students, Newberry College is pleased to confer upon Dr. Marilyn Merrick Schroer the title of Associate Professor Emerita of Psychology 
with all the rights and privileges thereto appertaining on this 14th day of September 2019. Mr. President, I present to you for the conferring of emeritus status, Dr. Marilyn Dahlman Seymour. In recognition of service and dedication to Newberry College and its students, Newberry College is pleased to confer upon Dr. Marilyn Dahlman Seymour the title Associate Professor Emerita of English, with all the rights and privileges thereto appertaining on this 14th day of December, 2019. Mr. President, I present to you for the conferring of the Honorary Doctor of Divinity, Bishop Kevin Lyle Strickland. In recognition of his continued support of Newberry College and his service and leadership in the Evangelical Lutheran Church, Newberry College is pleased to confer upon Bishop Kevin Lyle Strickland the degree of Doctor of Divinity Honoris Causa, with all rights and privileges thereto appertaining on this 14th day of December, 2019. As president of Newberry College, and by the authority vested in me by the Newberry College Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon Bishop Kevin Lyle Strickland, the Honorary Doctor of Divinity, with all the rights and privileges thereto. Nearly 20 years ago, one of my colleagues approached me in the hallway and told me he had this super student that he wanted me to meet. Wayne, he said, and this is a quote, this is Kevin Strickland, and one day he's going to be bishop. So when the Southeastern Senate earlier this year saw fit to elect him bishop, it seemed that this super guy had merely met his destiny, albeit sooner than we might have expected, faster than a speeding bullet, we might say. Still, this came as no surprise to many of us who have known him, who have followed his career, and who have been blessed by his ministry, which has always been marked by the interface of deep worship and significant mission. First, as a parish pastor, both congregations he served grew in numbers and in missional objectives. At Holy Trinity Nashville, he began conversations that later culminated in their becoming an intentionally inclusive, reconciling in Christ congregation. While in Nashville, he chaired the Board of Lutheran Services of Tennessee, where his deep passion was to work for the homeless and the hungry. And then as ELCA Director of Worship, he led the church in denominational dialogues around baptism and Holy Communion. He created a resource supplement to help pastors conduct marriages for all persons. He drafted the first Protestant prayer book for the incarcerated. He led the first ever ELCA rostered ministers gathering, and he designed the ELCA churchwide celebration of the 500th anniversary of the Reformation held in Washington, D.C. When he is not leaping such tall buildings in a single bound, in his spare time he has also managed to write a number of books, reports, and articles 
in the areas of preaching, liturgy, and pastoral care. It is telling that his name, Kevin, derives from the patron saint of Dublin, and it means kind and gentle and handsome. <laughs> Two out of three ain't bad, Kevin. <laughs> To be sure, he possesses a kind and gentle charm that is both disarming and gentle. But make no mistake, his instinctive leadership and fierce passion for causes that matter make him a force to be reckoned with, one more powerful than a locomotive. And so he is, faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, and able to leap tall buildings. He is a superman. He is a super bishop. And we are super honored to recognize you as one of our own. Ladies and gentlemen, the Reverend Dr. Kevin Strickland. Thank you to the faculty, to staff, to the Board of Trustees, Mr. President, Wayne, but to you, graduating class of 2019, Newberry College changed my life, and I hope that you will say it has changed yours. It changed mine for the better while I was here, and it continues to change mine all these years later. Newberry College taught me that anything that is deemed impossible could be possible. Through my education, through professors who committed to nurture me and walk with me and sometimes even remind me that I didn't have all the right answers. They gave me what I needed to be part of this world in a much more healthier, happier, supportive way. So I received this with humility and great gratitude and I look forward to seeing what you, the class of 2019, do as graduates of Newberry College. Thank you. Congratulations to our new Emerita recipients and to our honorary degree recipient, the Reverend Dr. Kevin Strickland. In April of every year, Newberry College hosts an award convocation at which various honors are given to deserving students, faculty, and staff of our institution. One of those awards is the Student Government Association Professor of the Year. The recipient has the honor of becoming the speaker for December commencement. The 2019 Professor of the Year Award was presented to Dr. Alicia Davis, Associate Professor of Accounting. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Davis to the lectern. Good afternoon. Um, before I get started, um, I would just like to um, just extend my, uh, my gratitude to the Board of Trustees and um, to President Sharon just for um, providing me with this opportunity to um, just provide a few words of encouragement to our graduating class. So um, I know that you all are excited, so we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, just by a show of hands, how many, um, how many runners do we have here? If you um, you know, run 5Ks or half marathons, if anyone has ever been a runner before, show of hands. Okay. Well, a few years ago, um, well, not a few years ago, but many years ago, I was an athlete. Um, I played volleyball, basketball, track, so forth. So um, I still do consider myself to be a runner. So I don't really run very fast, but, you know, I do reach my destination, so I'm a runner. <laughs> so um, there are just like some events that I do every year. Um, the Heart and Soul um, Five Mile, or how many of you have ever heard of that in Columbia, South Carolina? Okay, a few people. Um, I also do um, the Bridge Run um, that is held in Charleston, South Carolina. Now, um, I live in a small town called Barnwell, South Carolina. So um, if anybody knows where that is, it's like in the, the, like the, the country part of South Carolina. 
So um, it normally takes me about an hour and 40 minutes just to get to Charleston from Barnwell. So there's like a, a journey, just like a process that I always have to take just to even you know, prepare myself to, to even get to the starting line. I have to make sure that my clothes are right, you know, that my outfit matches. I have to make sure you know, that I'm, I'm just like, you know, ready mentally and physically to prepare just to even get to the starting line. So once I finally do um, reach my destination, once I do make it to Charleston, okay, so like once I do park my car, the starting line is like typically nowhere near where you're required to park. So there's like even another journey just to even get to the starting line. And so I know that some of you may be asking yourselves, well, if it's like that much of a journey, why do you do it? And so for me, it's just a goal that I actually set for myself. So how many of you know that in order to finish, that you must first begin? So to our graduating class of 2019, I would just like to say, welcome to your starting line. And I know that some of you are smiling because you're thinking, this is not my starting line. I've completed 126 hours. I've completed writing intensives. I've completed my main master. I'm finished. So I'm not starting today, but yet I'm finished. So, I would say yes and no. Yes, you have finished that part of your journey, but today is actually the start of a brand new journey. So, today is actually just like the start of your new life. So today, you need to decide exactly what type of person am I going to be professionally? What type of contribution am I going to make to the world from here on out? You know, so what am I going to do now to actually just like make this world a better place? So today is your starting line. Um, how many of you have ever heard of the term vision, or like a vision board? Okay, so um, life itself is actually a journey. It's also made up of several sub-journeys. Along this journey, it's important to have a vision. Your personal vision is how you commit to living your life. It is an integration of your abilities, your interests, your personality, your values, your goals, your skills, and your experience. So where do you see yourself five years from now? Where do you see yourself three years from now? Where do you see yourself one year from now? So I have a 16-year-old who plays travel sports. So we are always traveling somewhere. But before we leave, I always have to, um, actually I always have to know our destination because it's not really going to do me any good to get in my car if I don't really know where we're going. So what I always do is um, I set my GPS to make sure that we're taking the best route. But I never begin my journey without first knowing my destination. The same is true in life. How do you know what steps are needed when you're not really clear where you're trying to go? That's why it's important to have a vision. Your vision sets the stage for where you want to be. Some of you may be thinking, okay, but what if I don't know my vision? That's okay, because as long as you're actually am I waking up every single morning, you do have just like, you know, the opportunity to develop your vision. Just like figure out what are your passions? Just like, you know, what am I good about? Or what am I good at? And so whenever you figure that out, then you can then begin to formulate your vision. So um, whenever you are trying to um, fulfill your vision, there are just some things to keep in mind. Eliminate any unnecessary baggage. Unnecessary baggage is simply anything that is holding you back. It makes the journey a lot harder. It uses more resources, and it takes longer to reach your destination when you are trying to take things and people along with you who will hold you back. At this point, it is important to realize that your journey is just that. It's your journey, no one else's journey but yours. There may be two people who are enrolled, who enrolled at Newberry College on the same day, enrolled in the same courses, and completed their graduation requirements at the same time. However, each of them still had a very unique journey. So don't get discouraged when you see other people's journeys. Your journey is designed to get you to the place where you need to be at the time that is appointed just for you. The second point, don't place limits on yourself. Oftentimes we miss out on great opportunities because we place limits on ourselves. No one can limit you but you. I tell myself every day, there is nothing that I can't do. Now there are quite a few things that I shouldn't do, but there's nothing that I can't do. So when you limit yourself, you place limits on your future potential, and you limit your potential to be everything that you, were that you were designed to be. Each of us was created for a very specific purpose, and when limits are present, that purpose can never truly be fulfilled. So never place limits on yourself. Always remain teachable. Prior to becoming a full-time educator, I spent several years in corporate America and in government, but even before that, I was a student too. I can remember sitting in auditoriums at the University of South Carolina with 300 other students in my accounting classes. I loved my professors and I had a really great experience there. When I graduated, I felt like I was ready for the real world. I was ready to conquer anything. When I was offered my first position, I arrived for work feeling confident. I was confident in what I learned from my textbooks and I was ready to become one of the greatest accountants the world has ever seen. I arrived for work and received my first assignment. Slowly, my confidence left. This information, sorry, I arrived for work um, and received my first assignment, then I also felt lost. The information that, um, that I learned in class was still useful, but I was having issues with connecting the textbook to the real world. 
At this moment, I learned the value of being teachable. A lot of what I know now, I learned from my coworkers, from my past supervisors, and from others around me. So always be open to learning from people who have been where you're trying to go. No one succeeds alone. My next point, develop an action plan. So it's okay if you have a vision, but you must develop an action plan. So it's great to know where you want to go, but how will you get there? As I stated earlier, I travel a lot, but I don't always know the correct route to take to reach my destination. That's why I rely on my GPS. As you're creating your vision, don't forget about your GPS. What steps will you take? Do your steps include graduate school, the military, or a certain number of years of work experience? As you are just getting started, you may not know the steps to take to reach your destination. If you're not sure, that's okay too. Networking is important, is, is important during this journey. Reach out to others in the profession. Reach out to some of your professors I'm here that you, that you met at Newberry College. Use your resources, but you will need to develop an action plan if you want to be successful as you are trying to fulfill your vision. So now that you have your vision and you do have a plan, now there's actually a call to action. A plan without action is just a wish. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible says, faith without works is dead. It is great to have dreams and visions and goals, but if you don't commit to working to achieve your goals, it will never happen. So it's great to make connections and to get people to speak on your behalf, but you must put in the work for yourself to fulfill your own vision. And my last point, be patient. Success doesn't happen overnight, so don't get discouraged when what you want doesn't happen when you want it to happen. Another one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible says, the race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but he who endures until the end. It is not about who gets there first. What's important is that you don't give up. There will be roadblocks and construction along the way. What's so valuable about having your GPS along the way is that it, it does allow you to reroute your, um, your destination or your, or your route is needed. Along this journey, there may be doors that are closed and you may face rejection. These aren't always bad signs. Sometimes doors are closed to shield you from negative, ex from negative experiences. Other times doors are closed because there is something better behind the next door. There is a reason for everything that you will face along the journey. Learn from it and continue to move forward. So in my closing, one of my favorite characters from the Bible was Joseph. Joseph had actual visions. He knew where he was supposed to be. So in his excitement, he shared his vision with other people. Instead of being happy for him, he faced rejection from those who were closest to him. For Joseph had to endure some unfavorable circumstances um, just to get to the place where he was destined to be. Through it all, he never gave up. He endured every trial until he fulfilled his vision. The same people who rejected him had to come to him for help in their time of need. So I share with you this story because people may not always be supportive of your vision, but just keep in mind that it's important to never give up. There is no reward in giving up. When you feel like giving up, remember all that you have had to endure and use those as your momentum points just to keep moving forward. Some of you um, had to endure my eight o'clock tax class. Some of you had to endure Professor Hartzog's eight o'clock accounting class. So if you all can get up at eight o'clock in the morning and come and learn about accounting, then you can, you can pretty much do anything. So just keep that in mind. So um, as on the road to fulfilling your vision, be consistent, be diligent, and remain faithful. Again, to the December graduating class of 2019, I say welcome to your starting line. Thank you. Thank you. Great words. At this time, I would like to recognize members of our faculty and staff who have been instrumental in making this day possible. Will the faculty and staff please stand so we can show our appreciation for all that you do for our students and for Newberry College. This afternoon, out of respect for our special guests, graduates, and their families, we ask that you remain in your seat throughout the presentation of diplomas. Please do not come to the front of the chapel to take photographs of your graduate. This blocks other guests from being able to see the platform clearly and creates a safety hazard. Professionals are in place to photograph all graduates. Each of our graduates will be contacted by email so that proofs may be viewed and order. Will the candidates for graduation please stand? <laughs> Mr.
Mr. President, it is my honor to present to you the members of the Newberry College December graduating class of 2019. Now that you've completed all requirements for the baccalaureate degree at Newberry College, this is your moment. You've been approved by the faculty and the Board of Trustees for graduation. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, the faculty, and the staff, we extend to each of you a hearty congratulations to you and your families on this significant accomplishment. Professor Patrick Galliano will now present each of you to come forward and receive your hood and your diploma. The candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts, Luke J. Carraway, English Education, Newberry, South Carolina. <laughs> Mr. Carraway graduates with Summerlin Honors and Magna Cum Laude. Welton Cawthon, Communications, Minor, Art, Camden, South Carolina. Maya Brianna Dukes, Psychology, Minor, Social Work, Ware Shoals, South Carolina. <laughs> Emily London Glimp, Graphic Design, Minor, Art, Pomeria, South Carolina. Ms. Glimpf graduates cum laude. <laughs> Angela Margaret Gore, criminal justice, minor sociology. Chisago, Minnesota. Nathan Alexander Johnson, Music, Columbia, South Carolina. <laughs> Emily Catherine Jones, Psychology, Minor Biology, Newberry, South Carolina. Samuel Harrison Kynard, Political Science, Minor Business Administration, Lexington, South Carolina, degree awarded in absentia. Alexa Morgan Lettingham White, Psychology, Florence, South Carolina.
Emma Elizabeth Lindsay, Communications, Minor, Art, Newberry, South Carolina. Lisa Rochelle McGill, Psychology, Minor, Art, Charleston, South Carolina. <laughs> Joseph Dante Mead, Political Science, Minors, History, and Spanish. Newberry, South Carolina. Mr. Mead graduates magna cum laude. Briante Nishe Miller, Criminal Justice, Minor Psychology, Spartanburg, South Carolina. Ms. Miller graduates cum laude. Dana Renee Robinson, Art, Lawrence, South Carolina. Ms. Robinson graduates cum laude. Kendall Lynn Tipton, Criminal Justice, Minors, Psychology and Sociology, Land O'Lakes, Florida. <laughs> Kevin Frank Weber, History, Charleston, South Carolina. Mr. Weber graduates magna cum laude. <laughs> Naran Alexander Wright, psychology, forensic psychology with minors, criminal justice and sociology, Spartanburg, South Carolina. <clears throat> the candidate for the degree Bachelor of Music, Ian Walter Jones, Performance, <laughs> Minor Jazz Studies, North Charleston, South Carolina. The candidates for the degree, Bachelor of Music Education, James Clarence Body, Music Education, Saluda, South Carolina. <laughs> Chandler Taylor Huggins, Music Education, Lexington, South Carolina. The candidates for the degree, Bachelor of Science. Austin Anderson, Physical Education, Sport Management, Minor Business Administration, Anderson, South Carolina. Tyler Durand Anderson, 
Physical Education, Sport Management, Minor Business Administration, Anderson, South Carolina. Austin T. Barnes, Business Administration. <laughs> Minor Psychology, Central South Carolina. Molly Irene Chester, Biology, Environmental Science, Dumfries, Virginia. Marcus Lewis Frederick Chestnut, Accounting. Minor Business Administration, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. <laughs> Brianna Taylor Klontz, Elementary Education, Minor Psychology. Hickory, North Carolina. Ms. Klontz graduates with Summerlin Honors and Summa Cum Laude. Mm -hmm. Chelsea Lynn Cunningham, Biology, Minor, Spanish. Franklinton, North Carolina. Ms. Cunningham graduates with Summerlin Honors and Summa Cum Laude. Rachel Elizabeth Dillon, Health Science, Chesapeake Beach, Maryland. Robert Garrett DuBose, Accounting, Chapin, South Carolina, degree awarded in absentia. Mr. DeBose graduates summa cum laude. <laughs> Charles Balin English, physical education, sport management, Shiraw, South Carolina. Daryl Demetrius Foster, Jr., Physical Education, Sport Management, Minor Communications, Chester, South Carolina. <laughs> Autumn Nicole Fountain, Healthcare Management, Holly Hill, South Carolina. Garrett Vernon Giles, Business Administration, Fairfax, Virginia. James Francis Glenn III, Biology, Environmental Studies, Lyman, South Carolina, degree awarded in absentia. <laughs> Kelly May Gunter, Biology, Forensic Science, Minor, Chemistry, Batesburg, South Carolina.
Ms. Gunter graduates summa cum laude. Benjamin Tyler Havard, Physical Education, Leisure Services, Minor, Coaching, Newberry, South Carolina. <clears throat> Kyle Anthony Jordan, Biology, Rock Hill, South Carolina. Scotty C. Kuhn, Business Administration, Lexington, South Carolina. <clears throat> Corby Nathaniel Long, Physical Education, Sport Management, Minors, Business Administration and Coaching, Saluda, South Carolina. <laughs> Tiquan Andre Lyles, Business Administration, Greer, South Carolina. Courtney Sarah Lyons, Health Science, Minor, Biology, Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. Ms. Lyons graduates cum laude. Grace Brianna Martinez, Health Science, Spartanburg, South Carolina. <laughs> Travis Lee Morgan, Sport Management, Minor, Business Administration, Hampton, Georgia. Corbin Kirby Newton, Business Administration, Columbia, South Carolina. Adam Vaughn Rainwater, Healthcare Management, Minor Accounting, Columbia, South Carolina, degree awarded in absentia. Jeremy J. Ross, Biology, Annapolis, Maryland. Natalie Willis Sneed, Elementary Education, Lexington, South Carolina. Ms. Sneed graduates cum laude. <laughs> Jessica Bryce Stidham, Elementary Education, Winsboro, South Carolina. Ms. Stidham graduates magna cum laude. Daniel Joseph Sullivan, 
Business Administration, Hamilton, Virginia. Morgan Santana Sweeney, Healthcare Management, Bladenboro, North Carolina. <laughs> Philip Houston Taylor. Business Administration, Prosperity, South Carolina. <clears throat> Rakim Jarrell Waiters. Physical Education, Sport Management, Darlington, South Carolina. Hey, Mom, mate! <laughs> Chance Walker, Sport Management, Swansea, South Carolina. Tyler White, Healthcare Management, Chapin, South Carolina. The candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Aubrey Stevens Burgess, Nursing, Columbia, South Carolina, degree awarded in absentia. Perrin Daryl Burkett, Nursing, Leesville, South Carolina. <laughs> Lauren Cotney, Nursing, RN to BSN, Prosperity, South Carolina, degree awarded in absentia. Della Elizabeth Curcio, Nursing, Silver Street, South Carolina. Miranda Holly Dills, Nursing, Minors, Biology, and Religion, Boiling Springs, South Carolina. Ms. Dills graduates magna cum laude. Summer Lee Evett, Nursing, Liberty, South Carolina. Quinton Jamil Gayton, Nursing, Columbia, South Carolina. Reagan Elizabeth Hill, Nursing, Simpsonville, South Carolina. <laughs> Natalie Eileen Mallory, Nursing, Gilbert, South Carolina.
Alexandria Gamaris Metz, nursing, minor, psychology, Lexington, South Carolina. Kiana Simone Odom, nursing, Columbia, South Carolina. <laughs> Hannah Catherine Sariski, nursing, Charleston, South Carolina. <laughs> Mallory Aldwin Tummins, nursing, Joanna, South Carolina. Ashley Myers Wilkes, nursing, Raleigh, North Carolina. Ms. Wilkes graduates cum laude. The candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science, Respiratory Therapy. Megan Sagely Green, Respiratory Therapy, Spartanburg, South Carolina, degree awarded in absentia. Elise Jennings, Respiratory Therapy, Columbia, South Carolina, degree awarded in absentia. Ryan Nicholas Nutt, Respiratory Therapy, Columbia, Tennessee. Megan Elizabeth Schell, Respiratory Therapy, Greenville, South Carolina. <laughs> Rebecca Grace Skipper, Respiratory Therapy, Duncan, South Carolina. Danny Velasquez, Respiratory Therapy, Indian Land, South Carolina. <laughs> Maureen Pierce Waskevich, Respiratory Therapy, Indian Land, excuse me, Charleston, South Carolina. I got it. <laughs> Kelly Spell Widener, Respiratory Therapy, Goose Creek. South Carolina.
Mr. President, each candidate has now been presented and we are ready to confer the Newberry College Baccalaureate degree. As president of Newberry College, and through the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the December class of 2019 and August of 2019, your respective Newberry College baccalaureate degrees with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. This, this is a special, a special moment in the ceremony, so I invite to the podium your faculty marshal, Dr. Benita Witt. Graduates, please stand. Graduates, the faculty are so proud of you. We congratulate you on your accomplishments. Now you can think about the memories of being here at Newberry College, and you can also look forward to the vision and the dreams that you have before you. And if you look around and see all the people who are here for you, you know that you are loved by all of these people, including your faculty, your coaches, your staff, and your administrators. As you move forward, I expect you to look within yourself because you have within you all that you need to be successful. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans that I have for you. I have plans to prosper you, not harm you, to give you hope and a future. So look within yourself as you move toward your next journey. And always think about what you are here for, the purpose that God has designed for your life. And as you continue your journey, think about what Dr. Davis said. This is a journey. Every stage of life is a journey. Before I ask you to move your tassels, I want to give you a little tip. When you take your pictures, turn to the side so they can see your hood. If you stand forward, they don't see your hood. So that's just a little tip. Now, graduates, move your tassels. You may be seated. Ms. Mary Great Pios, Newberry College Class of 1981 and former president of the Alumni Association will now greet each of you as Newberry College alumni. Thank you, Dr. Parrish. On behalf of the Newberry College Alumni Association, I want to congratulate each of you on the success you have achieved today. I know that you and your family members are proud of your, of your accomplishment. This is neither the end of your journey nor the end of your relationship with Newberry College. Now you will go forth from this campus an educated citizen and an alum of this fine institution called Newberry College. I hope that your experience at Newberry has been meaningful and that through your membership in the Alumni Association, you will continue to be a part of the Newberry College family. Wear the alumni lapel pin with pride. Display your diploma with honor. And reflect on and share the memories of your experiences at Newberry. Please stand now for your induction into the Newberry College Alumni Association. In recognition of your having successfully completed your academic studies and all requirements of graduation, I hereby confer on you membership in the Newberry College Alumni Association with all the rights, 
privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto, including a permanent and warm welcome when you return to campus, opportunity to support the college through annual scholarship funds, and encouragement to keep the college informed of changes and success in your life. Congratulations, graduates, and welcome, new alumni. Graduates, if you want to be seated just for a second. You are now graduates of Newberry College, and we're pleased to recognize you as members of the Alumni Association. Our alumni have literally carried the name of Newberry College around the world and have brought honor to the alma mater through their service to God, their communities, and their college. And during these four years, I hope you've heard this often because it's our last message to you today. This world needs the first edition of you. This world doesn't need another edition of anybody up here, of your, of your parents, of your grandparents. You can make a difference, and this world needs a difference. But the difference that you offer is the first edition of you. Go with God's blessing, and may your path be paved with good health, true happiness, and much success. I ask you at this point, everyone, to please rise for the alma mater and remain standing through the benediction. Before we pray, let me thank all of you who helped to decorate the chapel today with these beautiful poinsettias. Just a word to those of you who chose to do that, and your names are in the bulletin. If you donated one in honor of someone, either you or them can take a plant. Did I make that clear? <laughs> Either you or them may take a plant. They are yours to take. Thank you for doing that. Don't forget the reception, which is in Holland Hall afterwards, and recently minted alumni. You should take a moment before I pray and just give yourselves a hand.
Now it's time to bless you and get on to work. Let's pray. Fair as Lord God of heaven and earth, the papers are finished, the tests are done. They're graded, the long nights of studying are over. Lifelong relationships have begun, friendships solidified, dreams honed, ideas hatched, and degrees conferred. Behold, you say, dear Lord, you make all things new. <coughs> this is one of the greatest things in life, dear God. Over and over and over, life offers us the opportunities to start brand new. Life is like a metaphorical jog around the lake and through the park. It takes training and determination, intention and planning, a good pair of running shoes, and it's most fun when you do it with other people. The benefits of jogging are best received when we do it regularly. Jogging offers us the joys of seeing each new day in new ways, for we are reborn every morning. Each new day is a gift, dear Lord. May we grasp it, love it, care for it, and make every day a better day for those around us. Send us now an abundance of your blessing upon these new alumni. Pour out your joy upon this campus community. With your Holy Spirit, wash over our families and friends with opportunities to succeed at every endeavor. And send your holy angels now to travel with all who leave from this place and bring them safely to their homes. Thank you, Lord God, for light, for love, for family and friends, and for this Newberry College. And dear Lord, may our graduates hear from you. Well done, good and faithful servants. I pray this in the name of God who created us all. Amen. Graduates, Newberry College loves you and so do I. Go in peace. Be a blessing to others. <laughs>